It's fucking Jover, dude. All right. Um, last episode of SNL uh, season. Obviously, we didn't even watch many of the episodes, but this is the one thing that they always do where they do a swap, a joke swap. Michael Che writes Colin Joss jokes, and Colin Joss wrote, writes Michael Che's jokes. It's like one of the only things that is like above average consistently. So, we'll dude, the Pope is a gooner. God, the Pope is crazy, dude. Woke Pope. I didn't even realize the Pope was like, yeah, nutting and shit is fucking fire. You know what I mean? He's a goddamn gooner, dude. He is so fucking woke. It's crazy. Colin said that on his own. He didn't even fucking, that wasn't even written. He just believes that. <laughs> That's not funny though. Wait, what do you mean? He's saying Jews control the weather. Bit more fucked up than the Scarlett Johansson joke, in my opinion, because that that has that has like residual impact. You know what I mean? That that goes far beyond. That goes far beyond. Peach jars. Kyle looks beautiful today. Thank you. Peach jars, unlike Cutie Cinderella, appreciates and respects Kaya. Well, this next joke might be a little too offensive. Yeah, <laughs> shedding tears right now for one of your fellow Hamas demons. Wait, what? You literally assault thousands with the... Bro, it's 2.37. The fuck? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Bro, it's 2.37. There is not a place on the planet where it's the top of the fucking hour. You're mathematically so far away. You're mathematically in one of the furthest minutes that you can be inside of from the top of the hour. <clears throat> India has 30 minute offsets. Okay. Ban me. I failed. I'm not going to ban you, but... I'm going to give you a second off. That that one wasn't that good, honestly. Like, I, I feel like there is definitely a, a, I don't know. You could be way more edgy on that one than that. Uh, the last one was all racism, right? Yeah, it was like, it was like super basic racism too. It was like not even clever. It's like, oh, we have space lasers and... We control the media. It's like a double whammy. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was, it could have been more complex. Wasn't that good? You laughed at every joke. No, I'm saying like as a finisher, I feel like you have to fucking hit a way harder point. And having it be the puppet too. God, maybe I just don't like, I, I don't like, I don't like gags. He already hit that joke theme with the weather thing. Yeah. That's the other part. And I just, I don't know. He just like fucking brought the puppet too, which is like a gag. So I, I, you know, I don't fuck with that either. It's edgy for sheltered libs. Yeah. I think you're just not a puppet guy. Jeff Dunham ruined it. I think objectively while, uh, way more, well, way more damaging overall, uh, a lot of things that Kanye West said were fucking unimaginably anti-Semitic. Him pulling out a fucking sock puppet, like, in and of itself was, was funnier. Because of how stupid the situation was. So, no, I'm not always anti-puppet. <clears throat> Didn't even hit Palestine, Israel, hit them like five times in the segment. What? Do not talk shit on Jeff Dunham. You crazy? Um, there's a Dan Tavies video that we could watch. Uh, I did also want to see this Megalopolis teaser trailer. And then I think we're going to watch the Megalopolis teaser trailer. This is Francis Ford Coppola. Or I think this is it Francis Ford Coppola made. Our new film, Megalopolis, is the best work I've ever had the privilege to preside over. 
Um, we'll, we'll finish Metropolis. We'll finish the anime Metropolis, and then we'll get to like Dantavius and other stuff. When does an empire die? Does it collapse in one terrible moment? He spent 125 million of his own money to make this, bro. Too much money. Motherfuckers got too much, too much dough, dude. It's crazy. No, no. But there comes a time when his people no longer believe in it. Don't let the now destroy the forever. What? Ladies and gentlemen. You need to order what? And children. Of no, I already fixed it. Age. But order it anyway. Welcome. Is this society? Is this way we're living? The only one that's available to us. We are taking our city back. And when we ask these questions, I personally think funding a massive artistic project like this with your own pocket dollars is a good thing overall. Obviously, when you have a passion project like this, launching it, especially when it's so goddamn costly and and maintaining it and and selling it and and completing it to your vision, it's probably going to be rather difficult. Um so I don't know. I don't know if it's like good or not. The movie literally has a real life actor in the theater talking to Adam Driver on the screen. What? When there's a dialogue about them, that basically is a utopia. There, it's good and it's bad. It's good for him doing his vision. It's bad because he doesn't have anyone to tell him no. E.g. no limitations, which creativity responds to. Yeah. I can see that. Coppola wanted to make this for 40 fucking years. Good or bad is irrelevant. That is something wholly unique. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people are panning this, uh, from what I understand. They're saying it's like indecipherable. Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis includes a sequence in which a man talks into onto the physical stage and speaks to Adam Driver's character through the screen. Wait, what? So every theater is going to have a guy? They said the same about Apocalypse Now when that came out. I mean, I will watch it. Coppola cited David Graeber's debt book as his inspiration for making this movie. You just lied about that. There's no fucking shot. No fucking 